Randomal Farm presents Goats Eating from a Periscope Q&A. <clears throat> hey, we have uh, goats eating in the barn. You can see we just gave them some new hay and they're uh, already here and they're just jumping and eating now. It's been a rainy day here so they're really happy to have hay. They didn't get a lot of, uh, of uh, pasture time because it was so nasty out. Uh, but you've got right here in the front, that's Bauer. Uh, if you haven't watched one of our scopes before, up here on the left-hand side is Jill. This is Coco on the far right. And right here in the middle is uh, Downtown Doo Doo Brown. And uh, they're all enjoying some hay. Uh, we just milked a couple of minutes ago. So um, Jill and Coco are uh, just refueling. There's Bauer. We've got Chloe around here somewhere. I think she's eating chaff hay. Yeah, the, the days are starting to get a little bit shorter now, so we're starting to bring these uh, bring the uh, guys in a little bit earlier because it's going to start getting dark soon. Just heading back for more. You can see they're not exactly gentle with each other. They just kind of knock each other out of the way. They are pretty cute. Yep. Thanks, Jojo. I'm going to try and get Bauer in a minute. He has this great habit of uh, he'll get a big mouthful of hay and then turn and just look right at you with uh, hay hanging out of his mouth. So, oh, And Chloe's come to visit. Hey, Chloe. Hi from Italy. Hi from Virginia. It's good to have you here. Uh, we're a Maranimal Farm. It's spelled like Mr. Animal Farm, but it's pronounced Maranimal. Oh. You say your name is Virginia? Thanks for the hearts. That's great. Oh. I was trying to get... <laughs> you can see they're pretty aggressive when they want to uh, get in your lap. I wanted to uh, let you guys see them... Uh, headbutting they were playing and they like to stand up straight on their hind legs and then basically crash their heads into each other and ow Judy Brown wants to chew on my finger a little bit <laughs> he loves to like uh, get in your lap and hug you so all right he might be out of the camera view for a little while <laughs> because he just wants to lay up here uh, you can see Chloe's um we have a uh a um, feeder that has minerals and baking soda in it, um, and the goats like to eat those. Um, so that's what they're doing right now. And this one is Chloe. I don't think you got a good shot of her earlier. She's a pretty little girl. Where she's gonna um, be bred later this year and probably have um, kids in the spring. So we expect them to be pretty. She's naturally polled, which means she doesn't have any horns. And um, she also has blue eyes. Oh, look at that, they're both <laughs> trying to eat from the same mouthful. You can see Bauer also has blue eyes and he's also naturally pulled. Um, Bauer is a weather, he, uh, which basically means he's a little boy, but he uh, has been fixed, so he's not going to be a buck. And you can see they were headbutting a little bit. Oh, I got up and moved and they're wondering what I'm doing. Uh, we gave them bananas as a snack a little while ago. So I think anytime I move, they, they're hoping that I have bananas again. Oh. That time, Jill was not playing. She, she didn't want anybody to get any of her hay. <laughs> yep. Let's see. Uh, you're looking for a good milk goat next year. Um, well, uh, advice... These guys, they're pretty small. You can see they're not bigger than uh, a medium-sized dog. Um, and Jill and Coco are both, both full-grown. But we get, I would say, when um, they're uh, they're milking really well, we get, what, maybe half a quart a day? We get about a quart. Both, of, um, both Jill and Coco are first fresheners, so it's their um, first kidding this year. And that 
will improve so they'll milk more and more over the next second and third freshening. Um, these guys are Nigerian dwarf goats. I don't know if Justin mentioned that. Um, so they do, since they are smaller, it is less milk overall, but they have a much higher butter fat percentage in their milk. Um, so their milk was gonna, is going to taste more like uh, cow's milk and will be easier to do cheese and that sort of stuff with. Um, you can also get alpines and sanines and those um, sorts of goats. Um, they'll produce more like a gallon or so a day, but they're also going to be a much larger goat. Um, and butter fat doesn't typically um, run as high. Thanks for those hearts. Let's see if we can try and get down here without spooking Coco too much. Um, but... <laughs> One thing that's really nice um, when you're if you're when you're looking for a goat is let's see it might be too dark to get down here, but you can see with uh, Coco's oh, I'm trying to get out of my own shadow, you can see Coco's teat. It's uh, pretty long and uh, you can get a good grip on that. It's like she has a really nice teat. You can go also go to our website and um, and our Facebook and we'll put pictures of uh, uh, of her on there. Um, but you'll want something that's going to be. Uh, uh, easy to milk. Jill is is easy and e easy enough to milk, but she's a lot more difficult than uh, than um, Coco. Oh. And Duty Brown's jumping in my lap again. Sorry for the shaky camera. <laughs> What's a reasonable price to spend? Um, so for these guys, uh, it depends on if you're getting, you This know, is Kristen, by the way. <laughs> I'm not just changing my voice. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on if you're getting a kid or if you're getting um, a, a doe that is in milk or if she's kind of like a senior doe. Um, so it really can range. Um, and it'll, you also pay more for, you know, genetics and a registered goat. Um, I always recommend getting a registered goat. Unregistered will be a little bit cheaper. However, you won't have um, any sort of records, so milk, milking records or anything like that on them. And also, in order to keep them in milk, um, you're going to have to have babies each year. And if you only have unregistered babies, um, it's going to cut your market to sell them, you know, drastically. So, um, that being said, uh, in our area, I would say anywhere from 350 on up to six or seven hundred if you're looking at you know a second or third freshener uh, that's in milk and like around the 350 range for um, you know just a, a new doling so just born and that's for the Nigerian dwarf goats I'm not as well versed in um, pricing for the other breeds thanks for all the hearts yeah they are cute we try to keep them as healthy as we can um, they seem to appreciate their life so far so <laughs> we have uh four buckets in here I think all full of um, of chaff hay which is uh, kind of like it's alfalfa and molasses and some other things but they like it a whole lot oh, we're glad to be able to give you advice um, we also put a lot of blogs on our website with instructions on basically a, a broken down how to of how to do anything with goats and chickens and farming um, basically when we started we looked around online to find information and we couldn't find it, so we thought we would uh, help the next people along the way and put it on there. So you can find us online. It's um, MrAnimalFarm.Weebly.com. Hi, Lily. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, thanks for all the hearts. Yeah, you can see. Uh, I'm, not, I don't, I'm not sure if that's playing or if that's they're trying to fight for uh, fight for their uh, chaff hay. Chloe's wagging her tail. I'm pretty sure she was playing. No problem. No problem. <coughs> oh. <coughs> Just inhaled a little bit of dust. Oh, and they're still eating over here. Chloe still Chloe wants some more camera time. And you can see in the uh, <coughs> in the hay feeder the blue piece. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, they're not very patient. Uh, you can see the blue piece. That's the original hay feeder. Um, but we also have chickens, and we had chickens that would jump up into the hay feeder and then lay their eggs, and they'd either get lost or they would then fall out and break. So I kind of uh, tacked up a piece of fencing. You can sort of see it. So now I can put more hay in there, um, but the chickens found their way around that. So uh, it didn't really work as well as I wanted it to, but now we can 
hold more uh, hay in there for them. Hey, Jill. Jill. Oh, that's Jill with a big mouth of food. <laughs> Yeah, we'd like to keep a no chicken zone, but uh, you walk in here at any point in the day and you'll probably find an egg in the hay feeder or on the floor under the hay feeder or somewhere. Well, and now, ow, Judy just bit me on the elbow. <laughs> Let's see, they can share a little bit. I don't have any bananas, buddy. And you can see, doo -doo, he just wants to be scratched a little bit. Hey, buddy. He likes to chew. They really like to get a hold of your fingers. And it's okay sometimes, but if you get it in their sideways, uh, sometimes they'll get you with their teeth. They're not being mean, they're just playing, but... Sometimes I play a little bit rougher than I would like. <laughs> I don't know if Justin mentioned, but what they're eating is um, chaff hay out of the buckets. And it's a, it's a form of alfalfa that's basically been fermented. Um, and unlike the regular dry hay that they're eating out of the feeder, as you can see, all of it's staying in the bucket. So it's a lot less waste. Um, and having the fermentation also provides them some other goodies that are, you know, good for their nutrition. So we usually give them the chaff hay and then, you know, a little bit of hay as well so they can browse on that. But They're all getting content. They'll all eat. For them, they eat like it's Thanksgiving every day. They'll eat until they're, uh bloated we're well, not bloated bloated but until they uh until they're pretty done and then they uh just lay down and take a nap not, thanks for the hearts yeah thank you for those hearts not too difficult of a life whoa <laughs> and chloe is standing on our milk stand now, it's pretty dirty but what we do with this um is we actually, uh, you'll see right there is the head catch. And the way that works is we'll put a bucket of feed right there. And then they'll jump up here, put their head through here to get to the feed. And you just kind of pull that shut. Uh, now you can see that gap looks a little bit smaller uh, on the screen, but um, it gives them a decent amount of distance. Like it's barely touching them, but it's narrow enough that they can't pull their head back out. And, it's kind of just to remind them to stay in place. So they eat while we milk them, and uh, and that's what this uh, bench is. If you uh, if you had seen Chloe on top of it and weren't and we're just curious what that was. Thanks for those hearts. And of course, it's also a platform or the high ground, so you can get or so they can get into a bucket of feed too. And you see, they're still. Still really hungry. Oh. <laughs> and they some the headbutts are something that they do all day long. It sounds and looks pretty violent, but um, it's really not that bad. It's just something that they do. I don't recommend playing that game with them. You'll probably lose. When uh, Bauer was a, uh, a baby, he um, he would get in the habit of getting on the milk stand, and if you weren't paying attention to you, and he'll still do it on occasion, but he would uh, run up behind you and headbutt you right in the back or in the ribs or something like that, and that was always pretty miserable. Luckily, we for the most part have broken him of that habit, but every once in a while he'll still catch you. like Dudu and Coco are in there together and um, Dudu Brown is Coco's little boy we uh, originally just bought Coco because we wanted to get a dough that was gonna get us a lot of milk 
um, but he had just been born, and, and it was a whole lot easier on them um, uh, to go, to just take them both at the same time. Um, since he was in milk, it would keep her, or since she was in milk, it would keep her in milk for a little while, and it would, since he was just a new uh, kid, um, it was going to be just easier to not be separated from his mom. So the plan was to keep um, Coco and then keep Dudu for about a month and a half or so until he uh, was able to uh, be sold. Uh, but obviously that didn't work out. <laughs> he likes to give goat hugs and he's he's probably the friendliest or the most affectionate of the goats. Um, you, he's been on the camera the least but that's because he's been jumping in our laps and trying to. It, it really is like he's trying to give you a hug. He'll jump up on you and put uh, both of his front legs uh, around you. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and get this light off so they can, uh, yeah, <laughs> we really did. <laughs> Thanks for those hearts. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get this light shut off and close them up for the night so they can finish eating and go to sleep. Um, but thank you everybody for uh, scoping with us and checking out our uh, our feed today. Um, if you want to find us on Twitter, you can at Mr. Animal Farm or Mr. Animal Farm. Um, like I said, find us on our website at mranimalfarm.weebly.com. Uh, thanks for joining us. And um, you can find us pretty much anywhere else, Instagram and on Facebook. Just look for Mr. Animal Farm. Um, but uh, thank you all very much, and we will talk to you next time. For more cute animal videos and farming how-tos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button.